So today's topic is AI for content strategy and SEO. We've talked about SEO, search engine optimization. Now let's talk about content strategy. And we brought the best in the business to help us with that. Uh, Wendy Lieber, my good friend, fellow EOer from Entrepreneurs Organization, is uh, the co-founder of Content Bacon, which is an inbound marketing resource that helps companies basically create amazing content, whether it's a blog post, social media, or a book. And she has a really, uh, you and I are really like very aligned. We're very similarly passionate about a couple of things, which is one, we love to help our folks figure out their why, why they do what they do and how to articulate that in a way that attracts people to you. And number two is talking about the power of storytelling, telling that story of purpose and the story of why and using it to grow your business. Um, you have 14 years as the president of Athena Marketing and Advertising before founding Content Bacon, and you're a member of Entrepreneurs Organization and uh, travel globally for them, speaking and, and in leadership roles, but also a, a board of trustee for the women in distress. I really appreciate, Wendy, you being here today. You've been a great friend to me, a great friend to BizHack, and uh, I'm really, uh, I think we're all really excited to hear what you have to share about content strategy. Well, thank you, Dan. And I'm excited to be here and I'm learning so much um, in this, this new era that we're in. And I wanted to kind of bring it back a little bit today because there is so much going on. And in just reading the chats, you know, I think a lot of people can feel overwhelmed with the amount of new information, new tools. And I think we all want to make sure that the doing that um, we're involved in is creating results, creating impact. And it can be very easy to get distracted and go down, you know, rabbit holes of work, you know, playing with tools, playing with ChatGPT. But at the end of the day, what are you trying to accomplish? So I'm going to spend some of the, the session here really not talking about AI, but talking about strategy and then kind of link it to that. So I'm a big believer in the, the flywheel is the answer. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you're looking at your business, it's really great to look at it from these perspectives. You know, what are you doing to generate awareness, attract strangers, um, you know, into your community? And then once you've got those, those strangers, you know, maybe on your website and your social media, what are you doing to engage with them? And then as they're engaging with you, perhaps they've opted into something, they're in your database, what are you doing to continue to engage and nurture them so that they become some type of revenue stream? We refer to it as customers here. And then in terms of, oh, thanks for, um, someone, someone on my team's getting fired. <laughs> There's a typo, I'm just kidding. Um, and then what are you doing to constantly stay in touch with your customers to turn them into repeat customers, grow um, referral sources. So it's really a great, a great way to look at your business. And there's different types of content that support each of those, which if you go to the next slide, Dan, I, I cover this. Um, so when you're thinking about your flywheel, again, there's different things that we do to attract, engage, and delight. And Again, these are um, just some highlights that you can look at when you're thinking about, well, what are we doing and how is it working? So, you know, what, what's the point of, of content? Um, again, you can go to the next slide. You know, why, why do you need a content strategy? And, you know, content is such an effective way to establish your brand voice. And it really is a great way to, to build that identity to build trust and credibility with your audience and ultimately drive, drive business results. So in terms of how do you create a content strategy, what's involved? To me, this is, this is so important and where every company should start, um, no matter, you know, no matter what your, your goals are. So if you go to the next slide, I, I break this out um, into, you know, what are some of the components of a winning content strategy? And while some of this, and we'll talk a little bit about how you can use AI to maybe support some of this, this really has to come from you. You know, what are your business goals? What do you want to achieve with your content? 
that could be driving more traffic. It could be increasing brand awareness. It could be a combination of all of the above, which often it is when you go back to that flywheel, you know, you might need to focus on one area to get the flywheel moving. But then as you get it moving, you'll hopefully be focusing on all the areas. Another key thing is, you know, I have a saying in our company, if, you know, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So really understanding who your audience is, who, who are you creating content for and getting as distinct as you can and really, you know, building out those, those buyer personas, those customer personas. And then from there, creating what does that, that content creation plan look like? What type of content are you going to create? What, what's the, the point of it going to be? Because someone that's maybe in research stage might require different content than someone who's evaluating you against your competition. So different types of content are required to, you know, depending on where they're at in the journey. And then again, it's, you know, your content is only so good as getting it out there. So creating a lot of content, um, you know, using whatever tools are available is only as good as, okay, well, A, is it quality content? And then how are we getting that out there? So having a content distribution plan and really understanding where your target audience is spending their time. And I'm a big believer that the foundation, you know, starts with your website, your email, and your social media platforms. And you know, if you've got those working well, then it's very easy to build on. If you don't have those working well, then, you know, spending money on paid may not get you the bang for your buck because ultimately they're going to check you out. And if they're not finding content that, you know, educates, entertains, inspires, um, they might not do business with you. And, and then, you know, one of, the, one of the things I wanted to jump in and say is content has become a very technical field. And there's a lot of conversation around which keywords and meta tags and how do you optimize for Google search, you know, because Google search is the front page of the internet. And if Google search doesn't index you and point people to that content, mm -hmm. they're never going to see it. But never forget that the content is going to be read by and acted upon by human being. Yeah. And so the way I like to think about it, and this is really at the core of everything that Wendy is saying, is you're writing for a human being, but recognizing that your secondary audience is the algorithm, because if you don't attend to the algorithm, no human being will ever actually see the content. So where I think business owners tend to get it really, really wrong <clears throat> is when they forget that they're writing for a human being. And this is fundamentally the greatest risk of AI to business owners that are forgetful of that fact, which is AI can generate content faster and more inexpensively than anything we've ever seen. But the content it creates is the Tin Man, all head, no heart. And Tin Man content ain't gonna grow your business. It just isn't. Back to you, Wendy. Yeah, no, thanks for saying all that. Um, and, you know, we have, a, a, again, a saying internally, you know, we write for humans first and search engines second. I mean, and, and now we're going to have to add on some things to that. So you're 100% right. And, and one of the the dangers, and, and maybe that's too strong of a word, but, you know, I, I know a lot of people that have been using ChatGPT or other tools to you know, write an apology letter to their wife or write a speech for their son's bar mitzvah. And, um, you know, to me, it's like, and, and again, it's impressive. Like what, what ChatGPT or Jasper can do, it's impressive, but I'm still a big believer that if I showed you or shared with you something that was AI generated versus, you know, generated from the heart, you're still, you're going to know the difference. And that's ultimately in the end, what will win. So, um, so yeah, so I, I like that 10 man and, and heart strategy. So what's I, I have a quick, funny story about that. I, you know, Jeff and I are buddies and I got an email from Jeff and I'm like, Jeff, chat GPT wrote that. <laughs> I could just tell like he was too formal. It was a little wonky. Now we're going to get better at having it mimic our voice. 
Yeah. But unless you're like a relatively skilled prompt engineer, your wife will know and it will backfire. <laughs> Agreed. So what's the impact of a content strategy? Um, and this again, kind of supports why, you know, it builds brand awareness, like we talked about, and that's super important. It establishes authority. Um, and again, this supports, you know, some of the, the SEO that Jeff was talking about. Um, it enhances your SEO. Con content is one of the key components of a winning SEO strategy. It drives prospect and customer engagement. So, you know, if, you're, if your website, for instance, is more of a brochureware right now, you know, content and different engagement strategies can take it to the next level. So it's really a place where your community will come to time and time again to, to interact with you. Of course, it supports lead generation and conversion. And a lot of times this is where people want to start. It's like, oh, they want leads, leads, leads. And, um, you know, I equated a little bit to, to like networking and we all know what it's like to go to a networking event and there's that annoying person that's just trying to get business and has no interest in getting to know you. And you just want to just get away from them versus the person who wants to get to know you, wants to introduce you to this person over here because they can help you build time developing a relationship with you. Then you want to do business with them. And so companies that want to just jump right into to lead generation and conversion without establishing that you know, I, I don't think we'll, we'll win. Um, it certainly facilitates customer retention. This is an area that most companies miss, which is why I love the flywheel, because if you spend a lot of time getting a customer and then you stop talking to them, you stop keeping them up to date with what you're doing, you might lose them. And it's a lot easier to keep a customer and get referrals from existing customers than always go out and get net new. And I sometimes love to, to create a challenge with companies and say, if you never got another new lead for a period of time, and maybe it's you know a couple months or, and you actually just worked with what you have, what might you come up with? And there's so many great ideas because we tend to neglect you know, the customers we have, the past customers we have, the relationships, always looking for that net new. So this might be an area where you've got a lot of low hanging fruit and you just need to develop a content strategy to support that. And of course, you know, providing value to your target audience is, is really key. Um, okay, you move to the next slide. No, no worries. And then supporting other marketing efforts. I do want to highlight this because you know, if you, if you do webinars, like this webinar will turn into, gosh, like hundreds of pieces of content for BizHack because they, they repurpose it in a way that's very effective. So having other marketing efforts and figuring out how content supports that is really important. Now you can move forward. Yeah, and I, w I wanted to just say really quickly uh, on that point, like I did a little riff a second ago. Uh, it was just trying to be supportive of Wendy, but I was talking about the Tin Man and uh, Jennifer Noreen commented, hey, oh, that was a good TikTok. And then uh, Nicole, and remind me of the name of the technology that does this, you can actually load this whole webinar recording and it'll generate little TikToks. What is that technology called? Uh, Pictory. Pictory is one of them and Opus. Yeah. So my team, their homework assignment last week was to build TikToks out of last week's video. And, you know, um, these moments that are organic, uh, they're, they're, they tend to work best uh, on social media. So um, I know um, there, there are a number of ways to measure uh, KPIs for content. Um, pl please run through them uh, just because you, you need to measure success to know if what you're doing is working. And then I had a, when you're wrapped up, I had a couple of questions for you, Wendy, about content. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of ways, again, a lot of people will go right to number four, you know, conversion rates, you know, super important, but all of these other things are indicators of is your content effective or not. And you'll see like the last two, you know, referrals and testimonials, again, you know, the, those can be really great tools and measurements to know that you're doing a great job with your content. So, um, it's super important to set this up and, you know, as a business leader, 
you know, you want to make sure you're a marketing doer. And I love how you, you distinguish those two, Dan, because I think it's such a, a great descriptor, but you, you want to make sure that what they're doing is effective. And all of these things we're talking about is what you need to build as a framework so that you can measure effectiveness. So you're not just spending lots of time and energy and yeah, you might have some, you know, some great content, but it might not be getting the impact. And these are ways to determine, well, what, what may or may not be working. Next week, we're going to talk about analytics and measuring success. And how do you measure success? And how do you leverage AI to help you measure success? But one really easy way to think about this is you have leading and lagging indicators. So traffic to your website is a good leading indicator because some percentage of them are going to want to be customers for you. Revenue is always a lagging indicator. That comes at the end of a process of wooing and communicating and selling. And so um, just know, know which ones are ones that are going to be predictive of future growth versus ones that are reflective of past effort. Uh, and that can really help you as you think about what your metrics are and organize your content strategy efforts. So how can you use AI in your content strategy? So there, and I know Nicole um, is going to go more into this. I'm just going to kind of touch upon it broadly, but there are a lot of ways. Um, I think one of the greatest things about AI is it's piqued our curiosity to learn how to use prompts to answer our questions and solve our challenges. And I'm a big believer that the quality of your of your life, you know, is is partly the the quality of the questions you're willing to ask or are asking, and so I think that you know using AI tools to brainstorm, to research, to you know to do more personalization. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it to kickstart things, but again, you have to be able to answer some of the key questions in order to one, know what to put in AI so that you're not just getting general information out. Um, but then once you have that framework, you know, using it for all of these things, content creation, the personalization, you know, obviously different audiences require personalization. Being able to do data analysis very quickly is a great way that AI can help with your content strategy or determine the impact of it. SEO and keyword strategy, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Predictive analysis, A-B testing, you know, chatbots um, are a great way to provide that real-time feedback and use AI to answer a lot of the questions that your audience may be ans ans asking. <laughs> I saw someone in the chat um, before I came on talk about their content strategy is determining all of the questions their audience might be asking and creating content around that. I think that's such a great way to start. That's often how we guide our customers. It's like, what are the frequently asked questions that you, your prospects are asking and you want them to, to ask and develop content strategy around, around that. So, um, so that's kind of broadly some things you can do. And then Sorry if this gives you a headache, all of this. Um, I know they'll be sharing the slides, so I won't go through this, but these are general prompts that can help get you started on you know, different topics. So, you know, things like, you know, what topics are our customers currently interested in? How can we align our content with those interests? How can we communicate our, our unique value proposition through our content? Again, a lot of these questions can help get you started and get the brain moving and help you take your content strategy to the next level. And then the next slide, I, I go into SEO more um, specifically on how you can use AI and create some prompts for your SEO strategy. So, you know, we talked about keywords. Um, we talked about, you know, using it to, you know, what co content opportunities are there based on popular trending keywords. So again, I won't read all of these, but there's some great prompts here that you can use to not only create that overall content strategy, but then even get more granular into specifics, you know, regarding specific things you can write about, you know, SEO prompts that can really get you more into the nitty gritty. So not only are you creating great content, but you're also ranking. And then the last thing I believe a lot is, I just wanted to some some overall you know takeaways. So everything starts with your strategy, and um, 
this quote, which is a zillion years old, um, is as relevant today as it as it ever was. You know, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Toxic tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So you need both. Um, so as a marketing leader, really making sure that you have a strategy in place and that you're constantly revisiting that and having your your team be able to say what it is is super important. Um, Anne Hanley, who is a, a you know content genius and a, a leader in this for mi very many years, has a saying: "Content is king, not the kingdom." I mean, I'm sorry, content is not king; it's the kingdom, and it's really true. Like content is is such an important part of an overall strategy. But in order to create content that resonates, it has to make the reader feel something. It has to matter. If it doesn't, nothing matters, including finishing the story. So this goes back to what Dan was saying. Your, your content has to have heart. And AI is a tool to enhance your content strategy, not to replace the human creativity and the strategic thinking that goes into crafting an impactful content strategy. And I'm a big believer. This is kind of what we you know adhere to in Content Bacon is if you want to become a voice of trust, you must be willing to talk about what others do not in your space. You must be willing to show what others do not in your space, and you must be willing to sell in a way others won't in your space. So I think AI is not going to do that for you. You've got to, you've got to be willing to do that. So if you have any questions, feedback, want to reach out to me, I'm always available, but I really, um, I really appreciate this. And I, I know that Nicole's going to take this and show you some, some very specifics on how to put this in action. That's right. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Wendy, I, first of all, I love this shot of you. It's really lovely. <laughs> it's, and, like um, a shot. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a glamour shot. And um, before we get to Nicole, I wanted to take one one second because there is a very regular theme in the chat from the day one of fear. And the fear is often from content creators content copywriters, uh, especially, you know, journalists in, in some of the circles I run in, that AI is coming for us. And if you look at the jobs that are at risk, copywriting is listed as one of the top jobs at risk. You run a shop filled with some of the world's best copywriters. And I imagine when they're being, you know, they're sharing with you in meetings, their worries, their fears, their concerns about what does this mean for us and the work we do. And I would love for you to share with me what you tell your team in moments like that. Yeah, I mean, you actually covered it or someone did, you know, it's it's not necessarily going to replace you, but if you're not embracing it and figuring out how to be more effective, then it will. So to me, it just is another tool in the toolbox. And as a content creation company, our goal is to produce content that has an impact, that content that educates, entertains, informs, and inspires. How we create that, you know, is really, you know, in some ways it's like, it's, it's none of your business, right? <laughs> like I say that jokingly, you know, whether we're using humans, AI, it, it, or a combination of, you know, we also, you know, talk about AI as actual intelligence, you know, and the combination of both. So to me, it's, again, it's, it's won't replace you unless you let it because it still needs the ability to start with a strategy, fact check, format, make sure it has a heart. And I believe all of these tools, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so impressed with you know agencies like Nicole where they've they've you know increased output by like 20, 30, 50 percent. And you know, we're always looking for ways to do that. But at the end of the day, it's all about impact. And so our team, you know, it's like either you know step up or step out because you know we're stepping up. Yeah, the train's rolling down the tracks, either hop aboard or get run over. Uh, th thank you, Wendy. Thank you for your expertise. Thanks for being here today.